the warmest welcome at Weinberg Boys High in March this year for delegates of the International Boys School Conference. From the start, the boys and staff of the school went out of their way to ensure that the 200 plus conference girls were entertained, had plenty to read, and sensed the Weinberg spirit at every turn. Plenary sessions, breakaway groups, and time for reflection followed thick and fast. New wine in new wineskins was the conference motto, and the International Boys School Coalition Conference, with its high profile speakers, innovative and dynamic academics, and knowledgeable facilitators, all kept intellectual pulses throbbing and delegates were spoilt for choice when it came to the small discussion group seminars. Weinberg boys, they all remain. Weinberg boys played a notable role in introducing and thanking the many official speakers who presented the wide variety of topics in the breakaway sessions. I'm really excited about this conference coming up. It's been a long time in planning. It all started with a chance comment a few years ago at the Maritzburg College Conference, where someone said to me, why don't you take it on? And I grabbed the idea. I thought it was, a, it was something exciting for the school to do. So we've spent two years planning and preparing and trying to make it something special. But the initial problem that hit us is that we needed a theme. We wanted something to, uh, to fly a flag on. And we eventually, after much discussion, said we were going to make our theme around something to do with Weinberg. And we thought, well, maybe the mountain part of things, the Berg. And well, no, that wasn't appropriate to conference because that would mean we unyielding and nothing new. Uh, although it could provide a, a good platform for boys. And eventually we went to the wine side of things, rather controversially, but, uh, and went to the biblical quote, which is, uh, don't put new wine into old skins. And that really does sum up what we're trying to do in this conference. They must have different ways of being taught. Uh, we've got to look at their pastoral development. Are we acknowledging the fact that society has changed and you can't handle boys the same way as you used to 20 or 100 years ago? And once we had that, then we geared all our speakers towards that. So for the last year, we've been trying to get speakers that would talk on different aspects of new skins. I really hope, and my expectations for this conference, that people come here and they get new ideas, they get stimulated, and they will take it back to their schools. Because this country desperately needs our boys to come forward and start taking leadership positions and not to sit back and to say, oh, the girls will do it. And that really, in the end, I think is our aim for this conference. Travato, loveliest of the Weinberg Great Houses, built at the turn of last century for the mining magnate Carl Jeppe by Sir Herbert Baker. It was one of the Cape buildings of note viewed by delegates who joined an historical tour arranged for them. St. John's Anglican Church, long associated with Weinberg Boys High. Both school and church sprang from the same vernacular cottage building, still standing a few meters away. The school museum, also known as the Eric Tasker Museum, after a legendary Weinberg history teacher, attracted the interest of conference delegates. Fascinating exhibits recall present-day sportsmen and the fallen of both world wars. Well, Varsity College has been involved with the uh, International Boys Schools Coalition now for three years. It started with Marysburg College, uh, where Varsity College has always been looking at a way to make a meaningful contribution back into uh, education, and it's particularly secondary education. And uh, so for the past three years we have been involved in this, uh, this wonderful forum. And uh, for us we get an immense amount out of it because what we take from this event we actually can apply back into our systems in the tertiary environment. We were invited by Weinberg Boys High School on behalf of the International Boys School Coalition. Um, the conference covers uh, new aspects in education and hopefully we brought along some publications that will support that and allow the teachers to achieve what they need to in the classroom. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity to meet some of the, 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 the best schools that, uh, from around the country who come together in one venue. So it, it is an incredible opportunity for new contacts and to be able to distribute products uh, on a more national basis. At Weinberg Boys we look after the, the turf and the landscaping uh, of the sports fields and, and the gardens. Uh, what we'd like to get out there is all the schools around you. If you don't have anybody looking after your, your sports fields or so, we, we're there to go and do it. Uh, there's water, there's cleaning, hygiene, any solution that takes up your time 
and HR issues and that. We'd like to handle that for you. We specialise in providing catering services for schools and we wanted to showcase our product here. So we actually offered all the lunches, we offered all the function catering here today and we staged for them a cafeteria as we normally would do it in a school. Walton's is part of the education system in this country. We're very actively involved and we offer a complete solution. Whatever you may require from the school perspective, you can get it from classroom to boardroom. Walton's is your basically overall supplier. From my school's perspective, we're really pleased to be at the conference. It's a fantastic networking opportunity for us. We wish for all schools in South Africa to be part of the My School program because it's a way for them to raise funds without even costing them a cent. And that really is the foundation of what we're trying to do. And if through conferences like these, we can elevate the brand and elevate our, our network into the communities, we would have achieved success. We're from D6, we do the School Communicator, which is a communication product. We're attending this conference because quite a few of the schools that are attending are clients already. So it's an opportunity for us to show some of the new developments. It's just another way to make sure your parents get the message that you send in there. We're at the conference because Apple has been involved heavily in education since the 1970s. Uh, currently there's over 350 active iPad programs countrywide. And since tablets are becoming ubiquitous, we have around 55 schools in the Western Cape alone, and schools are investigating the use of tablets in the classroom. We think it's important to show why the iPad should be the mobile device of choice in an educational environment. Uh, we're entering a new age where our ability to access information anywhere, anytime is the norm. Uh, DigiCape helps schools and teachers to apply this technology in a pedagogically sound way. I personally believe times are changing and schools need to change too. So the best way for us to get that message to teachers and to headmasters is to give them some hands-on experience with doing it. So we brought together teachers from various schools across the country who are actively using tablets, phones and interactive material in the classroom today to come and show other teachers what they were doing. A special treat for the conference delegates was a chocolate and wine pairing arranged at the Old Boys Pavilion. Named in honour of a former headmaster, W.E. Bill Bowden, the pavilion overlooks the magnificent Hawthornden Rugby A field and is a favourite venue for convivial Weinberg events, lunch parties, old boys gatherings and informal meetings of every sort. On this occasion, delicious Baten Verwachtung wines were offered to conference delegates, simultaneously with selections of the well-known Lindt chocolates, sponsored by Servest and arranged by Chocolatier, our very own Brian Buerta. It's a boys' school conference and I think there are interesting issues in the education of boys which have to be addressed. It's a changing subject all the time and if you get uh, boys educated in the wrong way or not educated, uh, you've got big social problems. If you get them edu uh, educated in the right way, you're going to have leaders, you're going to have a society that moves forward. So it's also very good for the people who work in that field, particularly the boys' schools. where They're also busy, so it's good for them to get out of their schools and to share, compare notes and hear some very good speakers. In South Africa we have this tradition of these major regional conferences and each year they tackle a question that is meaningful to them. We have many global programs and conferences but we also want to incubate some of the, the local conferences. So each year the, the, the South Africans tackle this, these terrific topics that mean something to them in terms of boys' education. And this one in particular I think is, is capturing that boys, that we need to educate boys now for a world that's different than the one that they, their, their parents grew up in, that a previous generation grew up in. It's accelerating dramatically. It's a challenge, but it's an opportunity. I think this is absolutely important. In most professions, this kind of conference is part of the general development of the profession. And I think in education, which is far key, and far more basic to the development of people. I think more of these conferences are important to reflect upon practice in order to develop and refine practice. The, the conference that Weinberg uh, has uh, cooperated in presenting with the International Boys' School Coalition is very, very important. 
because boys' schools have something to present to the world, which is an understanding of the best way to teach boys, the best practices for boys. And it used to be that boys' schools were each sort of isolated in their own silos and they weren't sharing their information, they weren't sharing their practices, they weren't sharing it with uh, the world of co-educators or educators in state schools. And now the, the fact of this conference means that uh, they're opening up their practices, they're willing to learn and they're willing to share. I think it's really important. I love coming to conferences like this. I love um, conversations about boys, uh, where, the, where the energy is concentrated on thinking about the reality of boys and what it is they need from us, the adults in their world. So the chance to talk about ideas, to celebrate the, both the exasperations and the challenges that are contained within adolescent boys are fantastic. You know, there was a, there's has been a variety of statements today about the vulnerability of South Africa as a nation, the challenges it faces, and, and so there's an element of, an extra element of needing to prepare our boys, your boys for that, and for taking their place in order of, um, this will be the generation that starts to seek the strong solutions and move forward and it sits with these boys. South Africa is uh, facing enormous challenges in its educational sector, everybody knows that. It's facing uh, huge challenges with its boys um, and with boys from very, very diverse backgrounds. And I have been impressed with the way South African educators are, are meeting these challenges and the way they're talking. These are not easy problems to solve. The popular Moyo restaurant provided the perfect setting for the Grand Conference Dinner, which elicited great admiration from our out-of-town visitors. The dancers, some of whom greeted delegates on arrival, as well as the restaurant's fabulous cuisine, combined to ensure an evening to remember. It was just one occasion of the conference's well-planned program, which will have encouraged people attending to arrange not only their attendance at future international boys' school conferences, but a return to the verdant winelands of the Cape, home of Weinberg Boys High School. As we said before, you will be most warmly welcomed. I can't really believe it's all over now. Two years of planning and here it is, it's all over. I'm not quite sure what my main emotion is. Yeah, there's a degree of uh, sadness that it's gone and passed. Uh, there's a degree of relief that I don't have to wake up in the morning and think conference and go to bed at night and think, have we done this, have we done that? But I think the main emotion in the end is, is one of pride. Uh, certainly in the day or two since the conference has been over, the number of emails that have poured in, the number of phone calls that have happened, it's, it's really made it all worthwhile. Probably what we did was we made people think, but then we made uh, quite a large area where catering took place and people could relax, and it was very, very evident the amount of discussions among colleagues and among the teaching fraternity. And I think that in the end was probably the highlight of the conference. We made people think, but we made them talk to one another, and we realized that we're all in the business of bringing up boys and getting boys to adapt to South African society. And to me, that was really the highlight of the whole conference. Now that this conference is over, where do we go to from here? And I think what is particularly exciting is that there's going to be another conference next year, and this time it's an international conference. And it's going to be hosted by bishops. All the boys' schools down here are going to be helping bishops organize it. And now we're going to have the opportunity to meet delegates from overseas. And the difference with next year's conference is that South Africa actually has got much to offer boys' education in this world. We have been working for a number of years now on cultural aspects, bringing boys together from all levels of society. And I think that the delegates can come over here and they can be as excited about this as we are.